Hello friends, today we will be speaking about the TLT batch which means the thermoluminescent dosimeter and this is the device that is used to calculate your radiation dose. So the idea behind this video is uh, to make radiology students aware of how the TLT badge actually works and so that they can answer confidently in the examinations. So there are many devices that are used to capture radiation but the TLT badge is most superior and is used worldwide. And why is it so? Because of the linearity of the response to doses, it is very sensitive to even low doses and it can be reused again and again. However, the disadvantage is no permanent reading is available and you don't get on the spot reading. Hence, you have to give it to the lab every three months and that's when the reading comes. So how exactly does this work? It is made up of a TLD cassette which is made up of high impact plastic and within it lies the TLD card. So we can just open it by sliding it down right here and you get this TLD card over here. So if you see this TLD card is covered in a black paper to protect it from uh, damage as well as from exposure to radiation from any open source. And if you look around and feel this, you can see a V cut right at the top. This ensures that it is placed in the TLD cassette correctly. We also have a metal plate on which are three discs. So if you feel around front and back, there are three discs which are seen within that metal plate. You have of course a paper uh, writing wrapper on top which tells you your name as well as uh, the time period you're supposed to wear it. It's usually a quarter for diagnostic departments as well as a regular number from the company. There are three discs as you can feel here. They have been mechanically clipped onto this plate and they have been clipped onto holes that are about 12 mm in diameter. This plate is actually made up of aluminum and uh, what we have are the calcium sulfate discs which are clipped onto it. So this is a personal monitoring radiation card and that number and the name ensures that you cannot exchange it, it's not transferable, it's just you who got to wear it at the time of using it in the radiation department. So the asymmetric V cut that we just spoke about allows the loading of this card into the plate in an exact orientation so that those discs face exactly these filters as we're going to talk about right now. So the spot on top is the aluminum filter. This one of plastic and the third one is open and we're going to find out why. So the first disc is actually D1 which is sandwiched between a pair of filter combination of 1 mm thick aluminum and 1 mm thick copper. The copper filter lies nearer to the disc. Disc 2 will lie behind this plastic. So it's sandwiched between a pair of 1.6 mm thick plastic filter. So you have the plastic filter here as well as the plastic filter over here. And this three will lie under a circular oval window. So this is open here as well as open here. So D1 is between the aluminum and copper filter. D2, this two between the two plastics which we see on either side. And this three is under a circular open window. And why does it work this way? To make the whole assembly energy independent. So the high energy X-ray and gamma dose can be measured from disc one which is here. The low energy X-ray and the gamma as well as the beta dose can be measured from disc two and low energy beta can be measured from disc 3. So what exactly is the disc? We can't really cut this open but we know that the disc is a phosphor such as a lithium fluoride or calcium fluoride in a solid crystal structure. And when this TLD badge is exposed to ionizing radiation at an ambient temperature, this radiation interacts with the phosphor crystal and it deposits all or part of the incident energy in that material. Now some of the atoms in the material that absorb that energy become ionized producing free electrons and these electrons get trapped in that crystal lattice itself. At the end of three months the entire card is taken back to the lab and they calculate the radiation dose. Now how exactly this radiation calculation is done? When we heat the crystal it causes the crystal lattice to vibrate and it releases those trapped electrons in the process. As these electrons come back to a ground state they release the captured energy from ionization as light. It is this light that is read using photomultiplier tubes and the photons read is equal to the radiation striking the phosphor. This is read on glow curve charts and based upon the glow curves observed on the TLD readers and subjective to the algorithms as per BRC in India, we can calculate the dose received by an individual. So what are the cutoff values? For the whole body for radiation workers, it is 20 millisieverts in a year. And it should not be more than 100 millisieverts average over five years. For non-radiation workers or the general public, it is two millisieverts in a year. For partial body, for the extremities, it has got to be 500 millisieverts in a year. And uh, 
for lens it is 150 millisieverts. For reporting over exposure cases as per AERP rules and regulations should not be more than 10 millisieverts in a quarter for the chest and 250 millisieverts in a quarter for wrist. If the value is below recordable value of 0 0.05 millisieverts, your reading will come as zero. So where are you supposed to wear it? When a lead apron is being used, when you're using it in the interventional department, you got to wear it under the lead apron at the chest level right here. However, for those who are working in interventional radiology for long periods of time, you should procure additional badges to be worn at the wrist.